Hi and welcome. I'm Jennifer Bonoff, founder of BuildYourDigitalBrand.com. Doug and I are excited to share our interview series on personal branding. Hear from a diverse group of experts on the purpose and benefits of establishing your brand. Learn how to stand out and be memorable. Hi, we're here today with Kate Payne on the Build Your Digital Brand interview series. Kate guides clients with their online presence strategies, whether for small business owners, professionals, or people in career transition. She specializes in personal branding and focuses on the use of LinkedIn as a powerful personal brand tool for marketing and business. LinkedIn profile and engagement practices are her niche. Kate and her clients work together to tease out their story and use it to market themselves amidst the noise on social media. Kate, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Doug. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, let's get right to it. My first question uh, today is, do you feel that having a visible personal brand is important to the success of your clients in their job search? Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm happy to expand on that, too. Um, <clears throat> having a personal brand especially um, online, which of course obviously carries over to your offline and real world persona too, is really hugely important because as everybody knows, there are so many platforms out there and ways that people are uh, putting themselves out there on social media, through their website, etc. cetera, that um, having, defining your own story and developing your own story, which is obviously an authentic one, it's not making one up, is key in order to be able to stand out online and to stand out when you walk in the door for an interview too. Um, people are gonna want to see you in person the way that they found you online. So you wanna make sure that those two are aligned. And so your personal brand is the piece that sets you apart. Many people ask me, so what is your personal brand? And I say the answer is actually quite simple. It's um, your personal brand is your reputation. And your reputation are your values and your integrity and the things that you know and believe in in, in the world that you uh, work in. Okay, well thanks. Uh, if a client had little or no visible personal branding, what three things would you tell them to do first to start the process of establishing their own digital brand? Well, the number one thing, as I referred to, um, is to discover um, and tease out your story. So everybody has a story. And when I talk about story, I don't mean um, airing your dirty laundry. I don't mean that kind of a story. I'm talking about the story that led you to do what you do. Perhaps you went to college for a certain type of major. For example, you were a, um, I don't know, a fine arts major. And then you decide that in your professional life, you've been in the world of, of nonprofit work and business, and you're on the administrative side. So there was a story there that led you to go from one thing to another. And that story could be very interesting to help set you apart, to uh, get people to learn about you and your authentic self as well as your professional self. So your story is important and that's a very basic general example. Um, <clears throat> the second piece would be to uh, make sure once you've discovered that story, to use it in a way in your messaging and in your content that um, sets you apart. So it's the thing that differentiates you from others. Many people don't realize that online, people don't really tell their story. They don't really show their human side. And that's a piece that's gonna set you apart. It's gonna create top of mind awareness for a hiring manager or a recruiter, even a potential client, to uh, say, wow, this person's different and I see in them a little something different than I see in all the other profiles I see, which is, I'm great at this and I'm good at that and I have 30 skills and this and that. Um, and so the third thing too, though, that's also important is to know, to know your target audience. So in the sense of if you're going for a certain type of job, you want to make sure that you're talking in a way that is uh, appropriate and targeted to the place where you're applying for a job. Research them, know about them. And so that make sure that your authenticity and your story and your messaging is also uh, relevant to the job that, that you're going after. Okay, very good. Oh, somewhat on the same note, but just uh, being a little bit more specific, it's a very competitive job market out there, and it's difficult for a candidate to stand out to a recruiter or a potential employer. What advice do you give your clients to help them to be memorable? I think it goes back to the story. Um, I also add in something a little quirky, and I want to be careful with that because quirky does not mean hokey or, or corny. Um, for example, I'll, I'll talk to people about, well, what is it that somebody, if somebody uh, knew you, that what's something that may, they may not know about you, like something kind of interesting. Um, perhaps they 
uh, collect comic books or they um, are a barefoot water skier or something like that. Um, adding some of that into your profile and um, so that when recruiters and things like that see you, that's again going to create that top of mind awareness. Not only are they going to be learning about your story and how it relates to their profession, but they're going to be learning about something that's just a little quirky that might be a great icebreaker. Um, it could be a good conversation starter. And it could just be something that makes somebody smile and they'll raise an eyebrow because they think, oh, this person's kind of put themselves out there in a, in a different way. Okay, very interesting. There's um, a lot of digital assets a person can use in creating their own digital brand, including social media accounts, a personal website, and a blog. Each can have a positive or negative impact on someone's brand or reputation, depending upon how they're used. What are your thoughts regarding online reputation management, and is it something you discuss with your clients in relation to their personal branding? It sure is, especially to job seekers and especially to younger job seekers. So when I'm working with people who are out of college, um, I, I'm talking to them about their, their use of social media. Um, some of it you've probably heard before and is, is uh, sort of a common sense kind of uh, rule, is that um, you know, be careful what you post. Uh, people can, recruiters especially, have ways of, you know, seeing you online. You may think that uh, using Snapchat, for example, is something that disappears immediately. Well, it's not. It's everything that gets on the Internet stays on the Internet forever. Um, watch how you post on face Facebook, for example. Um, you know, if you're at a party and things like that, you want to be careful of uh, showing pictures of you drinking um, or even just use of language. And that applies across all platforms. You certainly don't see that as much on LinkedIn because everybody knows that that's a professional network and so they don't really post that kind of stuff, but you'd be surprised. There are certainly people who do that as well. So really paying attention to how you've put yourself out there, even in the past, you can go back to your Facebook page, you can go back into anything and you can delete something so that they don't show up. So I'm talking about the things that just may be for your friends and your family, it's okay to know, but you don't want the world to know and certainly um, a hiring manager or a recruiter. So clean that up. And uh, okay, and our final question today, uh, Kate, is uh, do you think it's beneficial for individuals to create and publish content related to their industry or area of expertise to increase their online visibility and establish their authority? Absolutely. I refer to that as um, their thought leadership. And the thought leadership is actually a current modern day sort of marketing uh, social media buzzword for subject matter expert. <laughs> and so um, if they can start writing, and even if they don't want to write, if they're really, really committed to making this process work and defining their brand, finding even somebody to help them with their writing, writing on topics of which they know about. So that would be a blog or an article. So you can use that on a blog. And if you even have a personal website that you're going to create, that blog can, can live there. But then you can repurpose that blog onto places like LinkedIn and other things. And if you want to um, uh, make sure that people know about that blog and see it, then put that link in your social media posts, your Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, and get people to go back to your website or your LinkedIn page to see the story that you've written about. So think about three to five topics. They could be a series. They could be separate things. Outline them and things that you know about relevant to your pr profession. And certainly if you know the kind of company you want to apply for and the position that they are looking for, the, the job description, help, help it apply to that. It doesn't need to be blatant. But show your thought leadership and do it in a committed, consistent, and compelling manner. So maybe post once a week, once every other week. Whatever you decide on, stick to it because that shows, um, shows consistency and it shows that you're, you're thoughtful about this process. But um, it is definitely a way for you to stand out because a lot of people don't realize they could or should be doing it. Okay, very good, Kate. Well, I think you gave some very uh, insightful answers and thank you for participating. It's a pleasure having you here today. Thank you for having me.